Hello, I'm Leanne from Spectrum Noir, Crafters Companion, and in this little demonstration, this YouTube, we're going to have a look at another part of the accreditation colorist test, and we're going to have a look at how to add some dimension, some texture to our florals and botanicals. Um, when we're colouring, you know, florals and nature and things that are naturally occurring in our environment, we don't always want to have that perfect smooth blend. We do want to have a little bit more texture in there. And this is just a very basic first introduction to how you would achieve that. Um, certainly on the Spectrum Noir DVD, we've got much more in-depth tutorials. So please do, um, if you can, watch that. But this is all you need for the colorist, accredited colorist test. And it is just a little basic introduction for you to then build on um, with lots of other different techniques as well. So we're going to color this flower um, and you'll be able to see that the petals on the flower have lovely texture in there where we've got, you know, we can see that there's some um, kind of natural things going on, lines for want of a better word, but it isn't a smooth blend and it certainly improves the appearance of that little colored flower. And then finally, we're going to have a look at how to add some of this little flicked grass here as well, which will use the palette blending technique. Um, and there's another YouTube on palette blending. So if you haven't done palette blending up to now, watch that one before you try the grass because that will really help you out. So what I'm starting with is my little, little daisy flower here. And I've already coloured the leaves and I've done the leaves using the um, basic blending technique with three colours and there is a YouTube for that also so please have a look at that and I've just used um, some basic green colours I've used CG3, CD, CG2 and CG1 for the leaves and we'll use that for the grass for the flower head I'm going to use CT4, C3, CT3 and CT1 and I may add in depending on how I'm feeling a little bit of GB5 we'll see how it goes so the first thing I'm going to do is start with my lightest colour and that is my CT1 and exactly as we would do for smooth blends um, I'm just putting down a good even saturation of that colour on the petal. So again there's a, a YouTube on smooth blend so you can have a look at how to do that and I'm using that technique now to put down my first layer of colour onto the flower. Now, you will have noticed in some of the other YouTubes, if you've watched them all, that I would tell you to work on one thing at once and not colour a whole image, to work on small portions at a time. So if I followed my own good advice, right now I'd be working on one petal at a time, not on the full flower head. However, because I want to add texture, I actually want to work with dry ink, um, and that's so the next layers that I put on are defined rather than blended into the base layer. So this is a time when you would absolutely let your ink dry and not follow all of the good advice that I've given you previous to this. So I would leave that for a few seconds. It doesn't have to be too long, but just so that some of the alcohol has started to evaporate so that the next layer I put on won't blend into that first layer. It will absolutely allow you to see the texture. So I'm going to start with my darkest for adding the texture and that is CT4. And I'm going to use the same technique I used for hair colouring, a flicking motion. And I'm going to flick from the centre of the flower out into the petal with varying degrees of length of stroke. And actually just to talk to you about flicking, I'm going to talk about flicking for a second just on my scrap bit of paper. A flicking motion is very much where it really does just glide over the surface of the paper. So I don't push the nib down, I glide it over. If I push it down, this is what you're going to get. And that's not quite as pretty as the previous because you're getting a definite dot. You're not getting that lovely little wispy flick. So keep your nib hovering and keep your, I like to keep my wrist anchored and then just flick the pen. So that's flicking, that's what I'm doing here. And that's what we did with the hair. So from the centre, I'm flicking out with various lengths of flick, which is starting to add that dimension in there. Uh, not dimension, texture, sorry. Wrong YouTube. There we go. So you can see that texture starting to appear there beautifully now. So that's the darkest. 
and um, I've got CT3 here and I'm going to do a couple of those and just drag that further down into the petal but not many because I actually really like the result with just the CT1 and CT4 I think it was pretty I'm going to leave it at that and then I am going to grab my GB5 I did say I'd see how I felt and I'm feeling like I want to so I'm going to just pop a little bit of that in there so I've got a bit of a darker orange happening around the center and then just flick a couple of tiny ones out so it would be much darker in the center of the flower do you know what I think that just adds a little bit of what was missing and there we go how simple and easy was that so that's how we add the texture to a floral now we're going to take that technique and put some grass along the bottom as we talked about here so you can see there my little bits of flicky grass and we're going to use the palette blending technique there is a YouTube on that so please do go and check that out and I'm going to use my CG2 and CG3 and possibly CG1 for that so I'm going to scribble onto my um, little palette here this is CG2 and you see I kept my palette from before where I've already got some of my CG3 on there um, I think it's CG3 I wonder if it's it might be DG3 let's find out yes it is so we're going to grab DG3 there it is and we're going to add it back to here that's better that's exactly what I had on there there we go DG3 so a little bit of DG3 and then I'm going to take my CG3 and I'm going to take the bullet nib and I'm going to flick in the grass so exactly as we do with the palette blending I'm scooping and then I'm flicking that in and as it works away from the palette blender technique I'll get different colours in my grass so I'll get some dark flicks and some light flicks using this technique and that's how I'm able to create my grass. If you didn't use the palette blending technique and you had all one colour, it wouldn't look very grass-like. And it would be a little bit darker just underneath where the flower is, so I'll concentrate on that. And then let it get a little bit lighter out from underneath. There we go. How quick and easy was that? So that's how you get your little bit of grass underneath as well. And then you've got lovely texture in your florals. And there are lots more techniques and you can advance that absolutely. But for a first try and for your accredited colour test, that's all you need to be able to do. Have fun. Mm -hmm.